and welcome to this reading, reflection and prayer. Thursday, the 1st of April. Tomorrow is Good Friday and on Sunday we will celebrate Easter. But first of all, on Monday Thursday we would usually gather together in our hall in the evening and share Holy Communion together. We can't quite do that yet at the moment. So instead we're meeting in this way, through this video, you are in your home and I am in mine. But we believe the Holy Spirit joins us together as we worship. And when we can't share in bread and wine just yet, I want to take a chance today to think about what it is we do when we're celebrating Holy Communion. But first of all, we're going to hear a reading, which is from Luke chapter 22, verse 7 to 30. Let's listen for God's word. The day came during the festival of unleavened bread when the lambs for the Passover meal were to be killed. Jesus sent off Peter and John with these instructions. Go and get the Passover meal ready for us to eat. Where do you want us to get it ready? They asked him. He answered, as you go into the city, a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him into the house that he enters and say to the owner of the house, the teacher says to you, where is the room where my disciples and I will eat the Passover meal? He will show you a large furnished room upstairs where you will get everything ready. They went off and found everything just as Jesus had told them and they prepared the Passover meal. When the hour came, Jesus took his place at the table with the apostles. He said to them, I have wanted so much to eat this Passover meal with you before I suffer. But I tell you, I will never eat it until it is given its full meaning in the kingdom of God. Then Jesus took a cup, gave thanks to God and said, Take this and share it among yourselves. I tell you that from now on I will not drink this wine until the kingdom of God comes. Then he took a piece of bread, gave thanks to God, broke it, and gave it to them, saying, This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in memory of me. In the same way, he gave them the cup after the supper, saying, This cup is God's new covenant, sealed with my blood, which is poured out for you. But look, the one who betrays me is here at the table with me. The Son of Man will die as God has decided, but how terrible for that man who betrays him. Then they began to ask among themselves which one of them it could be who was going to do this. An argument broke out among the disciples as to which one of them should be thought of as the greatest. Jesus said to them, The kings of the pagans have power over their people, and the rulers claim the title friends of the people. But this is not the way it is with you. Rather, the greatest one among you must be like the youngest, and the leader must be like the servant. Who is greater, the one who sits down to eat, or the one who serves him? The one who sits down, of course, but I am among you as one who serves. You have stayed with me all through my trials, and just as my father has given me the right to rule, so I will give you the same right. You will eat and drink at my table in the kingdom, and you will sit on thrones to rule over the twelve tribes of Israel. I took my first communion when I was 17 years old, at the same time as I joined the church by making a public confession of my faith. And I did that along with several other people who were around the same age as me. That would be the traditional way that things were done in the Church of Scotland for many years although now children are also included in Holy Communion, whether they've made a profession of faith or not. I remember being in church and as a child and the, the plate of bread being passed over me, and other people will remember sitting out in the hall, waiting until it was finished. It's good that children can now be included in all of that. But I've heard people say that there was such a build-up for them as they made their way up through Sunday school and then into inquirers' classes to the point where they could take communion. It was a kind of rite of passage. It meant you were moving into adulthood. 
And then when they finally did get to take communion, it was really a bit of a disappointment because all it was was some bread and some wine, a small chunk of bread, a sip of wine, and maybe not even wine, maybe some grape juice. What was so special about that, really? And I think it, it can be helpful then to look at what it is we're doing when we celebrate communion because it is very simple in one sense and in another it's completely profound. Holy Communion is based on this passage from Scripture, from Luke's Gospel, and also from similar passages in Mark's Gospel and Matthew's Gospel. Jesus is eating a meal with his disciples around a table. And when we gather around the table in church, we are really enacting, we are reenacting what Jesus did with his disciples 2,000 years ago. So in many ways, we are looking back to something which happened in the past, and we remember at that time, they were looking back to something even earlier. They were looking back to the time of Moses, when God rescued his people out of slavery in Egypt. And when Jesus shared the bread and the wine with his disciples, he was talking about his death on the cross. So we also look back to that time, which is only shortly after the meal, when Jesus hung on the cross and died for us his body given up for us, his blood shed for us. So we remember at communion the things that have happened in the past. But it doesn't just stay in the past. It's not simply a memorial meal, we believe. Because what happened in the past affects us now. So as I've, I've already said, Jesus died on the cross, his body broken, his blood shed for us. It wasn't just for the people then, for the disciples then. He died for each person, which includes you and me, and makes a difference to our lives today. The other thing that is in the present tense, when we meet together in church or when we're in somebody's home, celebrating home communion, the, the, the sharing of bread and wine together joins us together as we are nourished on the body nourished by the body and blood of Christ as we feed on him, the we, the body of Christ, the, the church, we are strengthened, we are brought closer to each other, we are more united after we have shared in communion than we were before. Holy Communion is not just about past and it's not just about present, it's also about what happens in the future. It's a promise to us as well. Because one day we will all feast together at the Lord's table when we come into his kingdom. Jesus told this to his disciples in our reading, which we heard today from Luke's Gospel. He said to his disciples, You have stayed with me all through my trials, and just as my Father has given me the right to rule, so I will give you the same right. You will eat and drink at my table in my kingdom, and you will sit on thrones so the promise is to the disciples, it's also to us, that one day we will gather around the table and we will be with Jesus, the one who died for us. There is so much within Holy Communion and that's just a part of it. But if the next time you take communion, which hopefully won't be too long, if you could think about how this is relevant to the past, the, the, the present and the future, then I hope that increases the sense of worship that you have as you take in bread and wine, that it's more than just something that you consume very quickly, but is a, a profound and blessed moment for each person. We thank God. Amen. Let's pray. Holy God, we thank you for Jesus. We thank you for his life, his death, his resurrection. And as we approach Good Friday and remember the terrible way in which he died, we cling on to the truth which he taught, that he did it for us. That it wasn't a meaningless death, but a death with more meaning than anything else. That through him, through his death, his body broken, his blood shed, we would find forgiveness 
we would be saved, we would be reconciled with you. We thank you for the meal which we call Holy Communion. We miss it and we look forward to the time when we will be able to share in it again in the not too distant future. We look forward as well to the time when we will share in that great feast in heaven, when we will be with you in person, face to face, and we will be with the others that we have loved that have gone to be with you now. We thank you for the hope that we find in this day and in the meal which you gave us. And we thank you for the food which we have before us today, the food we have eaten, the food we have in our cupboards and fridges, as we remember those who have none or very little. We ask that you would provide and use us to provide for all who are in need. We thank you for Jesus, for his welcome to us, that he holds out his hands to us and beckons us to come as we ask for your forgiveness for the sin which we have committed and for all the times we have excluded others from your table. We ask that you would help us to see each person made in your image. So go with us, we pray, as we accompany you towards the cross, Lord Jesus. Help us on our way to see and to hear and to notice everything that you would have us understand this year, in this year of pandemic. May we see with fresh eyes, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. And now I'm going to say the blessing and after the blessing we're going to hear a reading about how Jesus left the table and went out to the Mount of Olives to pray. So the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, Son and Holy Spirit to be with you and with all those whom you love now and forevermore. Amen. Jesus left the city and went, as he usually did, to the Mount of Olives, and the disciples went with him. When he arrived at the place, he said to them, Pray that you will not fall into temptation. Then he went off from them about the distance of a stone's throw and knelt down and prayed. Father, he said, if you will, Take this cup of suffering away from me. Not my will, however, but your will be done. An angel from heaven appeared to him and strengthened him. In great anguish, he prayed even more fervently. The sweat was like drops of blood falling to the ground. Rising from his prayer, he went back to the disciples and found them asleep, worn out by their grief. He said to them, why are you sleeping? Get up and pray that you will not fall into temptations. 